In this video, I'll be doing the maths question you see on the screen here from paper two of the 2024 Maths Leave Insert exam. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, check out the playlist in the comments below. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, you're not in a classroom here, we're on YouTube, so take advantage of that. Pause, rewind, watch a half speed or watch a 2x speed. If you do find these videos useful or any of my videos, I would greatly appreciate a like or subscribe, but especially I'd appreciate you sharing it with a friend doing the Leave Insert or doing it next year. In question three, they ask us about parallelogram, but as is quite common in uh, honors level, they haven't drawn us a picture. So I would recommend to get good at uh, drawing yourself a picture. So they tell us a uh, length, a length, and an angle. They tell us an angle in this parallelogram is 110. I can draw that. And then they tell us uh, yeah, the angle A, B, C. Let's just say A is up here, B is here, and C is here. And B, C is, is the slightly longer one. And yeah, A, B is, yeah, A, B is 10, that's 13. And we can fill in the rest. Now, don't worry too much about getting that right. It just sometimes makes, makes life a little easier. It just helps you think about a question. Um, and then they simply ask you to find the area of this parallelogram. Now, I would say if you don't remember the formula, you should be able to break this up into triangles, into squares, and answer it. Because remember, we have an angle, 110. This whole thing's 110. So to draw that again, you have a, a triangle here of 20, 10. Oh yeah, a right angle up here. So you can actually find all the numbers on this. The height specifically is the is going to be an important one. Um, then there'll be a square. Uh, again, if you know this number, you can find the length of this um, rectangle, I guess. You could answer this, but you don't need any of that. There's a formula for, for this. It's simply, uh, let me see if I have it here. Ah, a H, the bottom by the height. You don't have the height though, but you could. You could just find it out here. That's, that's one way to do it. Uh, but they, they even help you more. They say, oh, you don't have the height? Well, don't worry. Um, there's another formula. I, I don't see it here, but I think I remember it. Yeah, it is. It's just from the triangle. Um, it's A, B, sine C. Um, and that's a, a side, a side, and an angle in between it, which they have given you. Now, that just means that you should be able to see that B sine C is actually just the height of this. Um, so it's, these are the same. H just happens to equal this. Anyway, use either of these you want. Well, use the bottom one. We would have uh, 10 times 13 times sine, uh, sine 110. Uh, put all that into a calculator. And to the nearest, yeah, nearest centimeter squared, it would equal 122. And that's the answer to part A. Okay, part B ask you to find all possible answers for X for this uh, trigonomic function here. Now, this type of question, I think, is one of the more common questions that students get half the marks or a quarter of the marks or, or just some of them, but don't get all of them. Because it's quite easy to solve this uh, for just one answer. And that's what I'm going to do first. Uh, there's a couple of ways to teach this. Uh, I'll, I'll show you a couple of them. Um, I'm going to draw some diagrams. There's very smart ways to do it. But the first way I'm going to do it is, is this. this the dumbest way I can think of doing it. It's a little longer, it's, it's, it's a little slower, but I honestly think it's the best way for students to, to do this if they have trouble. And then once they, they do this dumb, slow way, they can start taking some shortcuts and I'll, I'll show you some of them at the end. So here's how I would solve this. I would solve it, I would just start solving. I wouldn't worry about what they told me, X is between zero and 36. I would just start solving this. Um, and I would just take a cosine, the inverse cosine of both sides. So that's uh, the inverse cosine, square root three over two. Now here's where we get a little different. I, I would leave two X, whatever is inside this trigonomic function, I wouldn't mess around with it yet. So the answer I'm gonna find is just for two X. That's the first little different thing I would do. I'd solve this, uh, that comes out in a calculator for us. Um, I don't have it there, but I, I know what X is. So uh, the answer in the calculator would tell me is 30. So that's this is gonna get you some marks, but not all, not all that many, because so many students can do this, 
Well, how do you get all the other answers? Um, or sorry, x equals 15, we'll get you some. Um, well, here's what you need to do. And I'll, I'll start drawing some pictures now. You need to recognize what cosine looks like. It looks like something like this, and it stays going on forever. And you can do this for all of these types of questions. So you just need to realize that there's multiple answers. Cosine of anything, don't worry that it's 2x right now. That's why I've left 2x there. Cosine of anything equals something. This number, put it in a calculator. That number is about, uh, I don't know, 0 0.8, something like that, I think. And this is one. So that number is here. So basically, how many answers are? There's lots of answers. There's infinite. Here's an answer, here's an answer, here's one, here's one, here's one. And they stay going on forever. <coughs> Again, this is the dumb, slow way to do this. I like to get all of those answers for 2x. So let's write them all out here. There's infinite, so I won't really write them all. We'll start with the one the calculator gave us, 30. That one's right there. But there's uh, this one here, that should be minus 30. There's, remember, there's symmetry here, so we don't actually have to do much maths for the rest of them. Um, we need to recognize that this is zero. This one here is 360. That should be enough for us to find them all. So this one, this was 30 away from zero. This guy is 30 away from 360. So the next answer is 330. There's, there's cleverer ways to figure out 30 and 330, but I, I don't try not to worry about them. I just think of it the really slow, silly way. What about this answer here? Here's another one. Uh, 30 away from 360 on the right side. That'd be 390. And we'll stay going. Um, I, haven't, I don't have enough room here, but this would be, uh, let's see, this was 330 from here. 330 from here would be 690. Let me just double check that. Do I have this wrote down anywhere? Um, yeah, 690 be the next one. Um, and of course, uh, 720 is the next hump. So 30 away from 720, 30 the other side of 720, 750. And this says going on. Forever and ever. And this side says going on, uh, like it'd be minus 330, minus 390. Again, this is the slow, stupid way to answer this. But it works and we're nearly finished. Because this is all 2x. Well, x is equal to just half of all of these. Um, minus 15. 15. Uh, 1, 165. That's half of this. Uh, let me just go by my notes, save me making a mistake. Uh, 195, 345, uh, and 375. And these stay going on. There's lots of answers. At this point, and this could be done for, for a cosine, for sine, you could just draw out them and I get all these millions of answers. At this point, I worry about what they told me at the start of the question. They told me x was bigger than zero and less than 360. Uh, bigger than or equal, yeah. So I can just start getting rid of answers. Less than, bigger than zero. No, that's not right. And neither is there anything down there. 15, yeah, that works, that works, that works. That one just works. This guy, he's just too big. And so is all of these. And that answers the question. These are the four answers they're looking for. And that should work every time for you. Now, there are some different ways to do it. Um, the other way to do it would be to start drawing some pictures um, to realize that cosine 2x, well, I could use this function as 2x here and uh, change this guy. If x is bigger than zero, well, 2x is bigger than zero. If x is less than 360, 2x is less than 720. And then I, I, I wouldn't draw all that. I would just draw two of these, uh, sorry, three. Well, there's a half hump, hump, another half hump pair. I would draw that and I would just get these uh, four answers that I'm looking for. That'd be one way. Another way would be to, instead of drawing the function at two X, let me squeeze it in down here. Um, I would realize that multiplying inside here stretches this out. So we would get the same looking picture, but this would be all the way up to 360 now. It would stretch this out. Instead of 360 being here, 360 would be here. And very similar way, we'd get one answer. Calculator tells us 15. 
Um, this answer would be 15 away from 360 here. And we, we just worked them out by uh, 120 gap. One, sorry, 180 gaps. A little trickier. I, I think I've got away from that a bit. I really like my slow, methodical way. It writes loads of answers. It wastes a little bit of time. But I think students nearly always get the right answer doing this way. And then you can start figuring out shortcuts. As you get smarter, you can start saying, you know what, I never need the right minus. No, the, I know I won't need minus. As you get smarter and you're writing these ones, uh, you can say, right, I, I don't need anything over 720. Get rid of that. Or maybe you can go straight to this line. I, I hope that helped in some way, because I, I know a lot of students have problems. Um, everyone can get the first answer, 15, that's easy to get. Uh, solving the maths is quite short. Um, people have problems getting the others, so I hope that helped a little. Okay, question C is another one of those questions where they haven't drawn this picture, but it would have helped. So let me try and draw a picture, although it's, it's quite tricky in this case. Uh, first thing, I'll just, uh, 15 square root of three, to help me draw my picture and just guess an answer. I'm just gonna put that in the calculator and realize it's, it's quite close to 26. Again, that's not important for the answer. We'll just think on that a bit. And uh, I like to start the angle. They gave us an angle, K, so K, L, M. Uh, so L is in the middle and K is somewhere along this line. M is somewhere along this line and that angle is 25. And they told us, uh, so what have we got? LM, LM, um, did I say K? Yeah, K is somewhere along this way. Let's just write K up here and M down there. We'll fix that in a moment. And uh, so ML, this bottom row, that, that's, uh, yeah, there is 45. So we'll just say here's M. We'll say that's 45. So this line here has to be about 26. So. Sorry, not, not this line, not L, yeah, my bad, and not L, K, it's M, K. So this guy is 26 long. But that's where we're gonna get to, uh, multiple answers. So let's put a dotted line here for this guy. So there's a line from here that's about 26 long. So you could actually just get in your calculator 26, uh, your, your uh, compass, I mean, 26, and you'll find that you'll get two answers, you'll get these two answers both work. So let's draw both of them. Uh, let's see, one would look like that. So this is 25 degrees, this is L, M, K. But the other one would look like, uh, like this. Um, yeah, L, M, and K. And that's where this question becomes interesting. Um, there's two answers. They've asked you to find, just to double check here, they've asked you to find L, K, M. LKM, this angle up here, this angle up here. And they've been helpful, they told you there's two possible answers. And I think it would help students to have had a drawing of this. Uh, let's put some numbers in, 45, and uh, let's go back to the proper number, 15 square root three. If you were given this picture, if I gave this picture to an ordinary level student, I would expect them to be able to find this angle up here. Or if I gave this picture, 15 square root three. I'd expect them to find this angle here. Um, the difference is you're an honor student, so we haven't given you the picture, and we expect you to be able to find both. But I hope, hopefully you recognize it does help to draw. And another idea that was too difficult there, I just used a bit of logic. Okay, so uh, they want you to roughly draw something to give you an idea, um, and your idea should be triangle, um, the sine, cosine, tan, none of them, no right angle. So there's no right angle here, so can't use that. Next thing you should be thinking is sine rule and then cosine rule. Uh, both actually work here, but sine rule is a lot easier. Sine rule works here, let's, let's write that out. Uh, sine of theta, and it's identical for both of them. Sine of theta divided by 45. Sine of theta divided by 45, they both work and um, equals sine of 25 divided by 15 over square root three. Sine of uh, where 25 over square root, over 15 square root three. 
This works for both of them. Let's just go ahead and solve this. Uh, we'll get sine theta is equal 45 sine 25 over 15 square root 3. Theta is equal to the inverse sine of, of all this. Uh, 45 sine 25 over 15 square root 3. You put that into a calculator and the calculator will give you, I hope I wrote this down somewhere, Ah yeah, here we go. Uh, it will give you, f uh, rounded to the nearest degree, 47 degrees. Now here's where the problem arises. That's only one answer. They wanted two answers. And uh, from the picture, it's, I guess it's probably this angle here, the acute angle. This one looks like it's uh, bigger than 90 degrees. Uh, obtuse angle. So they've only given us one of the answers. So we have to use our brain, our honors level, our higher level uh, uh, brain to, to figure out the other one. So how do we do that? Uh, a couple of ways. One is just to recognize that it's always, recognize that the sign rule just gives us this answer, but what it should give us is 180 minus this as well. So just remembering that is one way, 180 minus 47, which is uh, 133. So that's one way, just remember the sign rule works like this. These Both these answers work, and if you put these both back in, you will get this equals that. Sine 47 or sine 133 will both give you the same answer. That's one way. Uh, other way is to think about it uh, in a picture form. There's a sine function. Sine 45, let's see, that's, uh, uh, this is 360. This is 180, that's 90. Sine 45 is about here, 47. is about here, that's, that gives you this answer. But so does 133. They both give you the same answer. Uh, another way to think about it is, um, I always forget these letters, there we go. Uh, the first quadrant and the second quadrant, the sine are the same. The sine in the first and the second quadrant work out the same. For any of those reasons, uh, 180 minus the answer you got is also a perfectly good answer. I guess this is sort of like part B. Uh, when you get an answer for sine, yeah, well, actually that's a much easier way to think of it. When you solve for sine, you're actually getting millions of answers. You're getting this answer, this answer, this one, this one, this one, all the ones down here. But for a triangle, the only two of them make sense. Like an angle bigger than 360, just stops making sense because it looks identical to this. A minus angle stops making sense, but it does look identical to this. Okay, I hope, uh, I hope I didn't confuse you too much with that. Basically, what's important to notice is when you do sign for a triangle, sign rule, you should get two answers. That's, that's basically it. Um, okay, if you have any follow-up questions, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.